All right, you guys, you guys said to go on Norwegian Cruise Line, and well, uh, I did that. Uh, my first Norwegian cruise ever just completed a couple days ago on the Norwegian Joy, and uh, I got some thoughts. Uh, a lot of you want to know what was the best thing, what was the worst thing. Well, I got a couple lists, the highs and lows, the ins and outs, uh, my very first cruise on Norwegian Cruise Line, the Norwegian Joy. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, and today we're going to go through it. We're going to go through my first experience with Norwegian Cruise Line and specifically uh, my experience on the Norwegian Joy. Now, if you've tracked along with La Lido Loca for any period of time, you know that one of our mantras, one of our guiding principles is to Pokemon that cruise life, uh, to try to collect them all. And uh, if you don't know what those references are, let me break it down simply. We want to go on as many different cruise ships and as many different cruise lines as possible uh, without repeating if possible and uh, we've been tracking along we started back in 2017 in april of 2017 we had that unfortunate shutdown uh, between 2020 and uh, part of 2021 but during that time we've been able to conquer 21 different cruise ships and we've been able to go now on six different cruise lines uh, we've been on carnival princess royal caribbean msc celebrity and now ncl Norwegian Cruise Line. There's still a couple outliers. I would say one of the biggest one is Holland America. We're trying to uh, make some time to go on Holland America. Of course, Virgin Voyages and Disney. That's right. Uh, at some point, we will get on a Disney cruise ship. But uh, what we're here to talk about today is the best and the worst of Norwegian uh, Joy, NCL Joy. Uh, I've got a list in no particular order. I'm going to give you the best things first and then the worst things. Number one was the embarkation and testing process. Now, unfortunately, this process is going to change in January of 2022, but for us, uh, all we had to do was show up at the cruise port. We were tested at the cruise port. That process was very seamless. We arrived about 9 a.m., and by 9.30, we had completed our test. We had our result, and we made our way into the main terminal. Check-in at the main terminal it was super easy. We got checked in there, and we were so early that they weren't even letting people on the cruise ship yet, and so we spent about an hour in Norwegian's uh, beautiful terminal there in Miami. Uh, waiting to get on the Norwegian Joy, but the whole process, uh, super easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, uh, one of the easiest embarkations we've had this year. Number two, the live entertainment. Let me tell you what, this is one of my favorite things in my cruising profile. How is the live entertainment? And uh, NCL Joy did not disappoint. Uh, two big stage shows that I got to take in this week, uh, Footloose, which was a full-on 90-minute Broadway production of Footloose, the musical, as it were, and uh, it was it was it was amazing. A huge cast, uh, very well done. A lot of good singing, a lot of good dancing. I, I don't necessarily love the story of Footloose. I've got. I've got issues with that movie. Like, how do they all like automatically know how to dance? But that's neither here nor there. Uh, uh, yeah, it was amazing. It was a really good production, and it was done well, and enjoyed it. And then the other big, huge stage show, Elements, uh, was uh, completely not uh, connected to any kind of thing. But it was a presentation of the four elements uh, weaved together to tell a story. And uh, what I appreciate on the cruise line is when they're able to bring things in beyond singing and dancing. And so, uh, a really amazing. Uh, uh, you know, integration of ballet, of circus arts, uh, aerialist, uh, strength folks. Uh, the dude worked the, the, the single the single loop. It was supported by a lot of technology there in the main theater. Pretty amazing. Live entertainment did not stop there. Uh, they had a band, Guns and Rojas, that rocked it out all week with rock and roll classics. They had performers that were doing uh, country and western music. They had a Latin band. They had a duo that did all kinds of standards. Uh, they had a piano player. They had a comedian. They had a juggler, and a really good juggler. I've seen some jugglers on cruise ships this year, and uh, th finally, I was excited to see a great juggling routine, especially one that finishes with cigar boxes, one of my favorite juggling props. And uh, yeah, so uh, live entertainment abounds. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, that's number two on my list. And number three is also live entertainment, but I, I felt like it needed its own slot on the list. Uh, the, the Beatles tribute uh, was mind-blowing. Again, I, I spent some time watching a Beatles documentary before I got on this cruise ship, and then to be immersed in the Beatles music, it was really cool. There was a, a one-hour stage show on the very first night of the cruise, and the 
the big theater. And then there were three subsequent shows in the Cavern Club, which is a replica of the small club in Liverpool, which the Beatles played. And it was pretty amazing. One night I went to the Cavern Club and I was probably like six or seven feet away from the band. Uh, I was just like a row back and there were huge speakers pumping out loud music. And uh, I had, uh, I've had a couple epiphanies on this trip, but one of the first epiphanies uh, had to do the relation of the audience to music. A lot of times we'll go see shows and you'll be, uh, you know, distant from the musicians, distant from the music. But what was cool about that cavern venue is you were right there in it. You were a few feet away from these songs that you're so familiar with, uh, by people that were performing them in a way that was familiar and the music was right there. It was very immersive and uh, it was awesome. Uh, I, I, they, so the, it was, the cool thing about the Beatles is they broke it up by kind of the uh, different you know eras of the Beatles. They had a Beatlemania show. They had a Sgt. Pepper show. They had an Abbey Road show. And that place was packed for each of those shows. But uh, yeah, the Beatles uh, tribute, uh, and, and I'm a Beatles fan, so uh, of course it's going to rise to the top of my list. Uh, the Beatles tribute definitely deserved its own spot on the list. It, it was pretty cool. Number four on my list were the two Starbucks that they had on board. Uh, you know, again, if you track along with what goes on here, uh, my favorite uh, coffee house, uh, chain, whatever, Starbucks. And uh, they had two full legit Starbucks on board, one in the atrium, one in the observation lounge. Uh, it, it wasn't included in any drink packages, so the, it was kind of expensive. The iced coffee that I normally get in the 4 or $5 range was like 6 or $7, plus I had to tip. And so uh, I did start my day out most days with my regular iced coffee when I was going to do my work. And uh, yeah, so it was a little bit of an expense, but I, I love the fact that I could keep in my normal routine even on the cruise ship. And I'll speak a, a little bit about the routine. Again, with these cruises, I've been trying to uh, strike the work uh, leisure balance. And so uh, like like the cruise on the Odyssey that I did last month, I set my alarm for 8 a.m. I would work between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. to try to get a show up, and then I would enjoy the rest of my day. And so a big part of that, uh, that routine was getting my daily coffee. And so uh, excited that there was Starbucks on board. I know that's not everybody's bag, uh, but it certainly uh, was appealing to me uh, on, on the joy. Uh, the ability to get Starbucks. Number five on my list was the spa experience. I've been challenging myself to do something new on cruises, something that I could share with you, something that I haven't seen a lot of uh, you know footage of out there. And so going to the spa was one of those things. So you guys know I was waiting to get a haircut. I've been letting my beard grow out. And I thought, well, why not? If they can fit me in, let me go see what the spa experience was like. And I really thought I was just going to get a haircut and a beard trim, but it turned into that whole facial experience. Uh, it was awesome. I would do it again a uh, hundred times. I enjoyed it quite a bit. Uh, I will leave a link above to that video if you did not see it. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I would recommend trying to get a spa treatment. Treat yourself. Again, it can be a little expensive, so you got a budget for that or if you got some uh, onboard credit. But uh, do something in the spa. They, they're really focused on uh, making you feel uh, important. And uh, sometimes we all want to feel important. And so that's really nice uh, that there's a place that uh, you can pay people money to make you feel important. I know that sounds a little crazy, but uh, that is kind of the exchange. Uh, but take it for what it is and, and enjoy the moment. I do like uh, I do like the spa treatment. Number six on my list, the observation lounge. I did not know how much I would love the observation lounge. Forward part of deck 15 on the NCL Joy is a big... A wide open place to chill and to look out of some windows. The thing that's cool about it is they, they've got a whole forward section where there's uh, big loungers where you can sit and watch the ship progressing through the sea, but uh, that it doesn't end there. The observation lounge extends down the side of the ship uh, with also some amazing views, but also some just great, like sometimes on cruise ships you can struggle to find a great place just to sit and relax, and the observation lounge had it all. Chairs, couches, tables, tables of different Different heights. And the other thing they do in the observation lounge is they also provide included food a couple times a day. In the morning, you can get Danish. Uh, they, they've got a bar at the front of the observation lounge. They got Starbucks up there. You can get Danish. You can get fruit. And then in the afternoon, they, they, they would set up a, a whole afternoon snack section, you know, charcuterie options with meats and cheeses and sweets. And uh, we had scones with uh, whipped cream and jam. You could have your own tea time there. And then also we sat in an area where they they had like a whole game section where we, you know, you could grab a, a deck of Uno cards or they had cribbage boards, they had chess checkers.
Raiders, Yahtzee, uh, Clue, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there was a lot that you could do in that spot. And uh, you could also just chill, sleep, rest, that kind of thing. That's where I ended up working most of the time. There were power outlets up there. Again, there were tables of varying heights. Uh, there were spots where there was no piped in music or like just some jazz music. So it was easy for me to do my work and not get in trouble with copyrighted music. And I loved it for a couple of reasons because one of our upcoming group cruises in August of 2022 uh, will be on the sister ship of the Norwegian Joy. We'll be on the Norwegian Encore, uh, making our way from Seattle to Alaska. And I really can imagine that observation deck uh, being the spot to be, uh, especially in places like Glacier Bay or just making your way through the interior of Alaska. Uh, it's going to be some amazing sights to see. Uh, if you're interested in going cruising with Jenny and I, my lovely wife, Jenny, Ladli Loka, if you're interested in that, go check out our webpage, www.ladlidaloka.com forward slash group cruise. Or if you need any help with your travel at all, uh, reach out to Ladlida Loka Travel, which is headed up by my lovely wife, Jenny, uh, a travel agent with tons of experience after the shutdown. She's booked uh, thousands of cruises and she's worked through the cancellation, rebooking credit process with thousands of cruises. And uh, so if you need some uh, cruise expertise help for free, uh, you can reach out to Jenny at uh, jbarnett at expediacruises.com. All right, number seven on my list is something that happens when you book Norwegian Cruise Line. When you book their cruises, they have what's called free at sea. And you get a, you get to pick a couple perks. And uh, they've got like uh, onboard drinks or they got specialty dining. They've got excursions. They got Wi-Fi. Well, we chose the drink package and the specialty dining. Now, the drink package got a little bit of a gotcha in there. You still have to pay the gratuities for the drink package. So for the two of us, we each had to pay, I believe, $100. $68 to have the drink package for the week, and those represented the gratuities. We also chose the two uh, dinner specialty dining package, and the gratuities were included in that, even though they, they give you a chance to do additional gratuities. I like this quite a bit. Uh, it was an easy uh, move into the drink package. Now, the only gotcha on their drink package that you get is water's not included. So at the beginning of the cruise, we bought some bottled water so that we had that. But for the rest of the cruise, anytime that we wanted a drink, we could get it. Uh, we got a lot of soda. Uh, you know, we don't drink a lot of alcohol. It didn't work at Starbucks, but uh, pretty much any kind of little mixed drink that you wanted or uh, frozen drink, uh, soda, that kind of thing, uh, it was included. And so it was nice to anytime you sat down or you went to the theater, or went to the bar or anything, uh, you could just get a drink. It was no big deal. And uh, of course, they get to know you over time. They would just show up with your drinks. Uh, it was really cool. I like that aspect of it. And then I also like that there was a mini dining package included in that free at sea. Uh, we picked two specialty dinings. We went to the Steakhouse, uh, which is Cagney's, and we also went to Le Bistro, which is the French restaurant. Uh, both of those are really good. This was, And then one night we actually paid for the Italian restaurant, so we tried three specialty dinings. Let me say this. This is the uh, one of the other epiphanies that I had. Uh, go to a specialty restaurant of a cuisine that you don't normally eat. This is my pro tip. Uh, when we went to Cagney's uh, Steakhouse, we had a plethora of things to compare Cagney's to. Was it better than Chops? Was it better than Fahrenheit on Carnival? Was it better than this? Was it, was it better than the place we had in Nashville, our local restaurant? Uh, same thing with Italian. Was it better than this? Was it better than that? We, we haven't gone to many French restaurants in life, and so the cool thing about doing the French specialty restaurant is we were all basically amazed at the food because we didn't have a point of reference. So not everybody's going to be able to do that, right? Eventually you're going to round out your, your palate and your cuisine and you'll have points of reference. But if you're one of those people that don't have a point of reference, maybe don't always just do the steakhouse. Maybe try a different uh, cuisine uh, and you might be amazed. Uh, I certainly was. Enjoyed uh, Cagney's, enjoyed the Italian, enjoyed the French restaurant, but I think I enjoyed the French restaurant the most just because I didn't have a lot of points of references, and it all seemed magical. Had the lobster thermidor, never had that, so it all seemed magical. But uh, yeah, so the free at sea, number seven, I like the fact that we were able to have options to get drinks and to get some specialty dining. Number eight, building on that, The Local. The Local is a restaurant on the Norwegian Joy on Deck 7, and it's a restaurant. It's 24 hours a day. There's like a half an hour here and there where they're switching over the menu, where there might be some cleaning going on, but essentially 24 hours a day, and it's a a sit down restaurant, right? A lot of people say, look, I don't like to go to the main dining room because it takes too long. And some people say, well, I don't like to go to the buffet because 
they don't serve you. Uh, yeah, it's quick, all that kind of stuff, but you still got to go get your own food. Uh, I like that being served, uh, but I wish I could do it in a way that is quicker. Well, the local is the best of all of those worlds. Now, why I feel like the local is probably one of the best included food options on any of the cruise lines that I've been on, that's a bold statement, I'll say that, is because it has a diverse menu. You can go there for breakfast and there is a diverse menu. You can go there for lunch and there is a diverse menu. You can go there for dinner and there is a diverse menu. And you can go there in the evening and there is a diverse menu. So it's not just about pizza. It's not just about chicken wings. You can also get meals. You can get salads. You can get a variety of things, fresh fruit. Uh, you know, in the morning, you can get French toast and pancakes and eggs and omelets. It's, it's like going to a diner, if you want to think of it like that. They've got sandwiches and burgers, but they also uh, have a blue plate special of the day where you can get uh, chicken parmesan. You know, it's, a, it, it's, it's really a unique thing. And, you know, we were fortunate. It's probably because of the reduced capacity. We never had to wait to get a seat in the local. But that place was staffed with a ton of crew members that remembered your name. And honestly, I think it's really a unique way to do included food options. Uh, yeah, that, you got to experience it. If you've never been on NCL, uh, one of the things that could uh, really blow your mind is the local. Number nine on my list is the casino. And for a couple reasons, the casino. First, it's a non-smoking casino. I like that. I feel kind of bad for the smokers. There is a smoking section and they put them in a glass box. And I went in the glass box a couple times and wow, it's smoky in the glass box. But for the non-smoker, it's really sweet because you have this big sprawling casino and uh, there's no smoking in it. It doesn't smell like smoke around the casino. Uh, that's that's a plus. And then uh, very specifically for the craps player, uh, one of the reasons I liked NCL is uh, they had a good odds option for the people that take the free odds on the craps table. Um, some of the cruise lines I've been on recently, they would only let you do uh, single odds. Uh, and if you know anything about craps, you want the most odds that you can take, the most free odds. And so on the craps table on the NCL Joy, you could do three, four, and five times odds, which is really nice and made for some really great testing the fates uh, there on the NCL Joy. I had a fun week. I played all seven nights. I, I ended up uh, positive in a big way. And uh, yeah, it was cool. I liked it. Of course, it begs the question, if I'd have lost all week, would I still love the casino? I don't know. But uh, yeah, for the week that I had on the Joy, thumbs up. Let me throw in number 10 here. And I thought this is a really cool feature. Uh, they have a cigar lounge uh, called the Humidor. And interestingly, you have to go outside to get to it. It is all sealed up. They've got an air filtration system in it. The only time that you could smell the cigar smoke from the cigar lounge is when you were in the cigar lounge. And so I thought this was a nice option. Uh, there's a lot of people that like to have drinks and cigars. And there's definitely some cigar smokers out there that like to cruise. And I like the fact that they had an indoor place for that to happen. A lot of times uh, you're pushed outside with that kind of thing. And uh, so it was nice uh, that they had a uh, an area there where you could buy cigars and you could also smoke cigars. I thought that was pretty cool. Number 11 on my list, I'm going to give some props to the unlimited Wi-Fi. There's a couple of Wi-Fi packages on NCL. One of them is a minutes-based package, which I don't like any minutes-based package because if you forget to log out the Wi-Fi, your minutes are going to be eaten up by notifications or other weird stuff. Uh, I do not like that. But I paid for the premium Wi-Fi, and it worked well for me all week. Uh, I was able to upload the show in about two hours, which is pretty good for on a cruise ship. Normally takes 15, 20 minutes at home, but I'll take two hours. I can work that into the cadence. Uh, I can work that into the routine. And so I was super happy with the Wi-Fi. It worked well for me all week, and uh, it was an extra expense for sure. But if it's part of your work, if it's part of your livelihood, and you have to have the Wi-Fi, you can definitely go on uh, at least the NCL Joy and uh, work the way you need to work with that unlimited Wi-Fi package. And number 12 on my list, the crew, the staff, uh, again, every cruise that I've gone on this year, uh, you can tell that there's uh, such a relief that everybody is back to work and uh, they're staffed up really well on Norwegian and uh, that staff was uh, really, uh, they worked hard to make sure that you had a good time. And so I just want to take a moment, give a shout out to the crew uh, from the casino to all the restaurants, to the local, to the room steward. Uh, we were treated very well and uh, yeah, it, a big shout out to the crew and we were, uh, we were glad to be there participating the, with them in their return. Uh, this was only the third cruise back for the joy and uh, you could tell that they were excited 
excited to be back, and uh, they made the trip uh, amazing. So shout out uh, to everybody that helped us out on the cruise, and uh, shout out to the crew. Okay, so that was the good. We're going to get to the bad. Uh, before I get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Look, it helps us out a ton. Uh, We're continuing to try to grow this community, grow this audience, and uh, subscribers is one way that we do this. And so if you could, please subscribe, tell somebody else about it, and uh, that way we can all be building this community together. Thank you in advance. All right, let me get to the things I did not like. Uh, and look, you know, I'm nitpicking on these. Number one, the NCL app. Uh, the app was fine when it was working, but it seemed like every night, I don't know if the app reset, but every night when I was trying to figure out what time the show was, the app would crash. And uh, you'd have to go through a whole process of relogging back in, and sometimes that relogging back in wouldn't work. And uh, so, yeah, like during the cruise, I eventually just started taking screenshots when the, the, the app was working so that I wouldn't be concerned that the app was, but it, it almost without fail. Whenever in the evening we'd be like, all right, what time's that show that we need to go to? And we would go to the app, the app would crash. Uh, I don't know what the deal was with that, but uh, it was, it, it wasn't the internet. The internet stayed up the whole time, but it was the app that was crashing. That was a little bit of a bummer, but uh, the app's pretty good. I mean, the, for telling you what's going on on the ship, I thought the app was pretty good. You could make reservations. You could do all kinds of stuff like that, but um, yeah, it did. It was, uh, it would crash. Number two on the list was the balcony. Now we got a good size balcony. We picked the balcony that we did because it was uh, bigger. And uh, the reason that it was bigger is the way that the Joy was designed is there's kind of a little cutout section where the, the front of the ship cuts in a little bit. And then you got a row of cabins, a row of balconies, and then it cuts out a little bit. Well, we took the one that was the last part of that cutout. And the challenge with the cutout is you lost visibility on the right side of the balcony. So like if you were on a flat balcony, you could lean over and you could see both ways. But because of that cutout, you couldn't really do that. And so uh, this balcony, like some of the other ones I've had this uh, cruising season, uh, I wasn't able to see as well. And so while we had more space on the balcony, which I thought was cool, I think we lost a little bit of the visibility. So uh, we were trying it out, uh, and a lot of people will look at those special rooms and say, oh, this is where the balcony is a little bigger. Uh, if you do that, you're certainly going to get more balcony space, but be aware that uh, you might you might run into a little visibility issue. Number three, the deal or no deal game. This is a game that's making its way onto a lot of cruise ships. I played it on the Celebrity Edge. This is kind of a bingo-esque deal. You buy some deal or no deal cards. Somebody gets up and actually plays deal or no deal. And uh, if your cases match what's going on in the deal or no deal game, you can win some of your money back. I paid $59 for three deal or no deal cards. And what was interesting is you don't know what the prizes are. At least I didn't know what the prizes are right away. And when they revealed what the prizes are, you had to get a lot of matches to get your $59 back. Now, I don't feel like it was the same way on the Celebrity Edge. Uh, my friend Don won a decent amount of money on the Celebrity Edge. I remember if you got just a few matches back, you could start getting some money back. Uh, on Norwegian, they had other things. They, they would give you a picture or they would give you uh, you know a pull tab card, that kind of thing. At the end of the day, uh, for me, deal or no deal, I didn't think it was a good value. The only time it would have been a great value is if you were the one person that got chosen or one of the two people that got chosen to play the actual deal or no deal game. Uh, those people actually made more than what they paid for the card. But I think for most people that were out there, they didn't have a chance at making back their $59. And so at least I like the idea that I could win my money back. And uh, once we saw the prizes for deal or no deal, it didn't seem like that was that possible. I mean, possible, but not likely. The number four thing that I did not like is you could not film in all of the shows. Now, I understand this. Uh, and I understand why it's like that. The people want to protect the copyright. You can film in a lot of the shows, but you could not film in Footloose and you could not film in the elements. And I really think that, you know, one thing I would like to do is show you uh, 10 seconds of those things just to give you some idea of what Footloose looks like or 10 seconds of uh, the element show just to give you some sense of it. Uh, that's what I normally try to do. I'm not looking to like, you know, film the whole show and put it out on the internet, but they were very strict about it uh, when they made the announcement that you couldn't film Footloose. When the show started, you could see some people's cell phone cameras go up and there were people in the aisles like, you know, hey, you got you can't do that. You can't do that. And so I didn't try. I tried, you know, I make sure that I follow the rules. Uh, I'm, that's the way I approach any kind of filming. Uh, it, I'll, I will film until there's some sort of announcement that says don't film or there's some sort of sign posted that says don't film. Uh, I assume in public places that you can film. 
I think that's a fairly decent assumption. But if they say specifically do not film, then I will not film. And uh, But, yeah, they were also policing it pretty heavily there. And uh, that was a little bit of a bummer. I probably could work with the PR and say, hey, look, could I get an exemption to that because I'm trying to promote your brand? But, uh, yeah, that, that's a bummer. And sometimes people like just a little bit of a memory for their thing. So uh, I get it, though. And, and you know. Again, I'm nitpicking to get to the things that I didn't like, but that was one moment where I was like, ah, oh, I would love to show you guys some of the Elements show, for example. And then the last thing on my list of the worst of the NCL joy is the location of the local. That's right, I love the local. I just did not like the location of the local. The local is uh, a deck above the atrium, and uh, you know, in traditional atrium style, they have a rail that you can hang over and see what's going on in the atrium from the local, which is all well and good until our favorite band Guns N' Rojas kick into some really loud music and then you could not hear anything in the local. And so a lot of times we would hit the local late at night, kind of recap uh, what our adventures had been, what our testing the fates had been. And it, it, depending on the band, you you couldn't hear, you, you know, like you're yelling at the, the person trying like, I want the pretzel bites. And they still couldn't hear you. And so, uh, you know, it, I get it. You know, it's a party atmosphere. There's a bar at the local. It's a great place to watch sports, that kind of thing. But uh, if I had my druthers, I would put the local somewhere where at least part of the local, you could hear people talk to each other when the band was playing. Look, I know super nitpicky, but I had to find some things that I didn't like. And I know there was more than once this past week where I was like, I just cannot hear anybody because this music, I have a full old man mode. This music's too loud. Turn this down which I like loud music, but uh, there it is. All right, that's the best and the worst of the Norwegian joy. Do you agree? Do you disagree? What would you add to my list? What would you take away? Uh, does this entice you to cruise on Norwegian? Leave a comment below. Thank you so much for checking out the show today. I hope you enjoyed it. This is Tony with La Lido Loca. Show your support by hitting the like button. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido.